On this special episode of It's Me or the Dog, Victoria takes on the world of puppies. Look, she wants to play. She meets two different families facing two very different puppy problems. What would you guys name a dog if we had a dog? So this is to grow. There's Elise and John, whose five-month-old rescue is running rings around them. But she's also showing a disturbing dark side. And I'm bleeding. Oh. The Thielens family are just starting their puppy adventure. We've never had a puppy before. They're trying to choose the perfect family pet. Does the dog eat the cat food or? But they're already in over their heads. Woo! You feed it, you walk it, and, and then what? Two families and two predicaments means double trouble for Victoria. Oh, owning a puppy takes a lot of effort. The hard work starts now. Victoria Stillwell has been training dogs of all sizes for 14 years, and she knows that the most crucial time to train a dog is when it's young. Having a puppy can be a fun, rewarding experience, but it's also a huge responsibility. If you don't invest the time and training right from the start, your puppy's behavior can quickly spiral out of control. Victoria's first stop is a household that already has a puppy, a five-month-old Rottweiler mix that is causing big problems. I'm Elise. I live with my boyfriend, John, and our five-month-old exuberant puppy, Raven. <coughs> the biggest issue that I have with Raven is the nipping and biting. Hey, Raven. Raven's teeth are small now, but when she gets older, I'm not looking forward to her clamping down on my leg or on my arm. I've repeatedly told Elise, no, we're not ready for a puppy. A puppy's going to be too much of a burden to be in an apartment. The thing that bothers me the most about John is the lack of help that I receive from him. I'm the one who takes her out all the time. I'm the one who usually feeds her. Victoria will start by observing the couple for the day to see where the problems lie. Hello. Hi, how are Hi. you? Hey, I'm Elise. Hey, nice to meet you. you. Too. Oh, this is oh, Raven. Look at this. <laughs> oh, my. So this is to go. Oh. oh, hello. Whoopsie. <laughs> I see that gate's effective. Yeah. She has some sharp claws on her. Ow. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Immediately, Raven started to jump at me. Raven. She was also starting to nip me. And she grabs hold hard. How are you doing? Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet Hi, you also. Good to meet you. Well, tell me about She's... all the issues you're having. Raven's a handful. Oh, I Raven see. Raven, off. Wow. Wow. Off. Raven, off. When I sat down, Raven was all over me. She's very friendly, but she uses her mouth and she nips very, very hard. And you can't even pull your hand out because it just rips on the way out. It does rip on the way out. That kind of hurts, puppy. It's very normal for puppies to be mouthy and to chew things, but each time Raven's mouth went on my arm, her little sharp teeth dug in, and that hurts. Oh, OK. Um, ow. I'm just one huge big chew toy, aren't I? That is, this is really, woo! Yeah. Raven doesn't have any sense of boundaries. <laughs> she's jumping up on me, John and Elise. She's biting my shoes, she's biting my clothes. Nothing that I can do can get this puppy off me. So what would you do now with her? I would just usually put her up in her cage. Could you do that? Yeah, sure. Let's just see what she does when you do that. Let's go. How long does she spend in her crate a day? I'd probably say 70% of the day in, in the crate. She's in the crate when we're not at home. She's in the crate when we're asleep. And anytime she misbehaves, she's in the crate. So that's basically all of her day. That is a lot of crate time. No wonder Raven is crazy when she comes out. When Raven does get some free time out of her crate, John likes her to have a little playtime. How do you play with her? I normally like to just grab one of her toys. OK, show me. Play with her. Hey, Ray Paul. Come on. Come on. But Elise isn't a fan of John's games. I definitely think that John playing with Raven is one of the reasons why she's kind of aggressive playing. John is always riling her up and getting Raven to snap at him. When I come along and Raven's snapping at me, I'm not as able to deal with it as John would be. What do you want me to do? Personally, I just want her to stop uh, evacuating in my apartment. Evacuating. <laughs> I love the way you say it. How many times a day do you take her outside to toilet? I'd say two or three. Sometimes we'll take her outside to use the bathroom, and then, like, 
20 minutes later, she'll, she'll go again. Do you argue over her? We do. She complains about me not taking Raven out as much as she does. But I'd like to remind her that she agreed to take her out all that she needed to when she got a puppy. John told me before we ever got a puppy that if I got a puppy, it would be all of my responsibility. I have to admit that I did not believe him, and <laughs> it looks like John was serious. I thought I would get some help on this. If Elise didn't realize that a puppy was going to be a lot of work before, she definitely realizes it now. Now she sees that there is a price that comes with that cute, cuddly puppy. Left to handle Raven on her own, Elise often takes her to a nearby lot to allow her to run off some steam. Can you let her off? Sure. If you'd want to get her back, how do you get her back? Let's say if you did it now. Raven. Raven, come here. Come here. Good girl. <laughs> but when it's time to go home, okay. Raven reveals a darker side. Ow. And that. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> that, and that's, ow. Raven suddenly started to go at Elise. When Elise put her back on the leash, Raven got angry. And the nipping and the biting wasn't just play. And I'm bleeding. Oh, really? She, oh, wow. Ooh. All right, let's take her back. OK. Raven was biting so hard that she actually drew blood on Elise. This isn't normal nipping and mouthing. This isn't friendly play. This is a dog getting frustrated. Now that Victoria has a better idea of what she's dealing with, she wants to sit down with John and Elise for a serious chat. I know that there's things that Elise and I are doing wrong, and hopefully Victoria can correct them, but I don't want her shaking that finger. Getting a puppy is not as easy as people initially think. Number one, she expresses herself with her mouth. It hurts, I've got all the scratches on my hand still to prove it. It hurts now, but when she grows into adulthood and she's orally fixated, wow. That is gonna be very serious, gonna be very, very dangerous. So we have to stop the behavior right now. It's very important for puppies to have play. But what is this all getting her riled up by playing with your arms in your hand? Encouraging her, encouraging her, saying, bite me, bite me, here are my hands, bite me. What is that? I don't know, it's just the way I've always played with, with my dog. You can't tell her off for nipping, yet encourage her to do that in play. You have to use discipline to guide your dog. We need to make the crate a better place for her, not a place of punishment. You can't use the place where she is most of the day to be a place of punishment for a timeout. It's not fair. The crate has to be a place that she likes being in. The house training. You take her out four times a day. Still a little too little. Now, I saw something that really concerned me on the walk. When you put Raven back on the leash after her running around, she got angry. She did, and I felt it. That mouthing and that playful nipping suddenly turned. You're like, don't put me back on the leash. Mm -hmm. We have to address that right now. But I'm glad I'm here. Because if I wasn't, I could see Raven going down a very, very bad path. And this is where you come in, John. I know you didn't really want Raven, but you don't have a choice now. She's here, and you need to help out more. I am a bit concerned about having to change my schedule around Raven. Uh, I think it's going to impact Elise a little bit more than myself, but I do think that it may be slightly inconvenient for both of us. Do I have your 100% commitment? Yes. Yes. And you're not just saying that because I'm here? <laughs> no. All right. I'm going to have to do some major intervention here. Raven is a lovely puppy. She's very friendly, but she is showing some worrying signs. At the moment, she's small, but soon she's going to grow very, very big, very, very powerful. Coming up, Victoria has a new approach to puppy discipline. Uh-oh. And later... You guys want a puppy, yeah? Yeah. Victoria prepares a second family for their very first puppy. I put in a puppy and, like, finally it's, like, happening. <laughs> Victoria is immersed in the world of puppies. I'd probably say 70% of the day in, in the crate. She's already witnessed the mistakes one family has been making with their five-month-old pup, right. Raven. 
Now, she wants to put right John and Elise's puppy mistakes, starting with Raven's ridiculously undersized living quarters. I have for you a crate. Da, da, da. This thing is huge. Wow. Yeah, now it is huge. Raven's crate is much too small for her. She needs to be in a much larger crate so that she can stand up, turn around, be able to lie down in comfort. I guess Raven was actually kind of cramped in that little crate, which is probably why she didn't want to get in it too often. Raven! Good girl! Yay! There you go. I just put little treats in there. Good girl. And get her used to going in and out. for a couple of seconds, and then I gradually build it up. Raven warmed up to the crate a lot quicker than normal. I guess some part of that was that we weren't forcing her to go in the crate like we normally are. This is never, ever used as a punishment. Crate should be a comfortable, den-like space where the dog feels safe in it. If a crate is used for punishment, then of course the dog doesn't want to go in it. Keep the crate door open when you're here so she can go in and out. Having the new crate makes me feel um, really good for Raven, that she has somewhere comfortable to lay down and uh, something with no bad memories attached to it. The crate now designated as a positive place for Raven. Victoria wants to instill a more constructive form of discipline in the house. I want to stop her from mouthing so much and from jumping up. When I came here to observe, I mean, I was getting jumped up on when I was standing. Ow! Yeah, she does. When I was sitting. Um, ow. I don't want Raven to continue this behavior, especially into adulthood, because then it goes from being just annoying to being dangerous. So I want us to do something that's going to address both the jumping and the mouthing. I want to do a removal technique. I'm going to use this. And the reason why I've got a chain leash is that when she jumps up to try and bite the leash, that's not going to be too pleasant. So I'm going to put her leash on. Yeah, it'll feel good, does it? Mm-hmm. I'd like you both just to sit down on the sofa. Good girl. She jumps up on your mouths, you at all. Uh-oh. I just said, uh-oh, and removed her. Training a puppy should never be confrontational. You don't want your puppy to fear you by dominating it. So I'd like you to take over. I'm going to come and sit down. Any mouthing, jumping up, biting. She's out, OK? Hi. Hi, sweetheart. OK. Well, let's go. Let's go. I'd like you to say, ah, so it's a really clear, different marker. Victoria still wants the couple to give affection. Come here, Raven. But if she starts to mouth, ah. she is removed before the behavior can escalate. Nice. Good. That's great, Elise. That's perfect. After only a few attempts, Victoria's calm approach pays off. Hi. Hi. Good girl. Hi, puppy. After working with Victoria, I'm very confident that John and I will be able to train Raven to be calmer and to exhibit the good behavior that we want. Now, John, I know you like rough housing, going like this no more. The very fact that he played rough with her was actually encouraging her to bite his arms and his hands. No more rough play. The only interaction between you and her is nice, gentle stroking. OK? OK. It's important to praise a puppy when a puppy's done well. Mark every single good behavior. If puppy is praised for a behavior, it's more likely to offer you that behavior again. Coming up, Raven's not going home without a fight. Keep her away from you. And Victoria gives a second family a lesson in Puppy 101. You can't give a puppy free reign at the house. There'll be accidents everywhere. Ay, ay, ay. Uh-oh. Victoria Stillwell is on a mission to help two different families with their puppy problems. Today, she's brought John and Elise to a local dog park to address their pup Raven's dangerous nipping habit. I was concerned about her behavior when you put her back on the leash. Raven is very angry when she gets put on the leash, and she's doing some damage to the point where she drew blood on Elise. <laughs> that behavior is potentially very dangerous, especially if she keeps continuing it until she's older. So if we can just let her off and just let her run around. And say, go, that's it. I want you to call her back to you. I want you to put her into a sit. As you put the leash on, give her a treat. Raven, come here. Sit, give her a treat. 
Lovely. The goal of this training is so that Elise can get Raven on the leash and that Raven doesn't try and attack her. You're turning her brain from feeling the emotion of anger to working. Unleash her, let her run again. Good. Tell her go. 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 So by just doing this, she doesn't actually know what's going to happen. Am I just going to hang out? Am I going to be taken back? Am I going to be let off? Then I'll call her to you. Raven. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Now she's a bit of a calm frame mind. You put the leash on. So far, Raven yeah. is surprisingly calm. We need to walk out. But when it's time to leave, Raven's old habits kick in. Be there again. Right, right. Hey. Hey. It definitely concerned me when I saw Raven biting at Elisa's pants leg. I had never seen that out of Raven before. Walk back in again. With Raven showing no signs of relenting, Victoria is forced to step in. Because you've got her on a harness, you can keep her away from your body by this, by lifting her up like that. OK. OK? I don't like to be confrontational with a dog, but in that situation, Raven was getting angrier and angrier, and the only thing I could do was to hold her away from me until she calmed down, like that. Now that Raven is calm, Elise tries again. I want you now to take her out again. Raven, sit. Good. Good girl, let's go. Keep her away from you. Make the leash short, that's it. And don't care how much she fights. Up. By keeping Raven at arm's length, she's unable to nip at Elise, and the tantrum soon subsides. Okay. Try it again. Sit. Good. Let's go. Good. Good That's girl. nice. The couple still have to keep practicing, but overall, Raven was really responsive. Once a puppy's learnt, you're on the right track. Raven has shown that she is capable of changing her ways. But she's not the only one who will have to make adjustments. And I want to go through a schedule and a routine that you're going to have with Raven every day. With the schedule, Raven is going to have less accidents inside the home. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah. Victoria wants the number of times Raven is taken out to dramatically increase, and she's counting on John to help out. I was happy that Victoria actually put on the schedule when John needs to take her out. I think that it's really going to encourage him to take her out more often. So you're taking her out seven, eight, nine, nine times in the day. My lord, nine times a day? I walk her probably once a weekend on Saturdays. All right, so are you guys committed to the schedule? Yes. Yes. OK, good. I hope John's OK with his new responsibilities. I want to have faith that he is going to follow through. He needs to. The more time and effort he puts into his puppy now, the less problems there are going to be in the future. You working together, you're going to be consistent, plus you're going to help Elise. No more rough play. Redirect any chewing onto a toy. Practice with a chain leash the removal technique. You can do it when you're both here or if you have a guest come in. So good luck and I'll see you in a few days. Thank you. All right. Thank you very You're much. You're very welcome. See you guys. Bye, Raven. Bye. Bye. The tools that Victoria has shown us and seeing how much Raven has calmed down, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting her more training and having a calmer dog. Now that she's set John and Elise back on the right path, Victoria is on her way to the Thielens family to make sure they start their own puppy adventure off right. Most people are fond of the idea of getting a puppy, but often miss the most important step, which is to carefully consider all the factors before you bring the puppy home. My name is Katie Thielens. John and I, we have three kids. Maggie's 11 years old, and Jack and Claire are twins, and they're six and a half years old. See, beagles are cute. We've always wanted a dog, but I think Maggie was the force behind getting the dog. It's been like six or seven years um, that I've wanted a puppy, and like finally it's like happening. What would you guys name a dog if we had a dog? We would name it Rocco. The children may have been planning for some time, but not everyone is well prepared. I know you feed it, you walk it, and, and then what? Victoria will help the family bring their new puppy home, but first she wants to guide them through some key preparations. Hello. Hi, Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come All here. Right. Yes, I'm looking forward to this. Hello. Here we go, Hi. guys. Hi. You guys want a puppy, yeah? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Have you thought what kind of puppy you want? I wanted a boxer. You wanted a boxer? I like papillons because they're cute. Like, you <laughs> do? Okay. What kind of puppy were you guys looking for? Uh, not a little fluffy yappy thing um, and not a great big too hard to handle uh, okay. sort of dog. Just a family dog. All right. So no boxers and no <laughs> papillons. <laughs> well, perhaps not. Yeah. It's really important that the family choose a puppy that they're going to be able to deal with. The dog has to meet your lifestyle because if you're a low energy family with a high energy dog, that dog's going to suffer. You've never had a puppy before. You've never had a puppy. No. We're going to go to a rescue shelter to mm -hmm. try and find one. What sort of requirements do you need from that dog? We want a dog that's going to grow up with us as a family. That we're, These kids are little and I don't want it to grow any bigger than they are. Right. So who is going to be the one who's going to be the main carer? <laughs> you. Mommy. You're going to chip in. You are all going to train it. How about that? <laughs> Getting a puppy is not a decision that should be taken lightly. It looks fun, but it's a lot of work. You are responsible for your puppy's education. You're responsible for giving your puppy boundaries. You are responsible for house training your puppy. Everything comes down to you. Take me around the house, show me where you think you're going to keep puppy during the day, where you want puppy to sleep, that kind of stuff. Sounds great. Okay. I'm All not right. entirely sure, though. The goal of my observation today is to get a feel of the house, scope things out, so that I can set everything up for puppy success. I'm hopeful for my floors, my new floors. Your floors, you don't want little nails scratching. No, I don't. OK. Do they come with booties? Can I get booties for the dog? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm really glad I came here because the family don't really know anything about dogs, let alone puppies. Victoria, this is our laundry room, and I'm thinking it might be a good place to keep a puppy. We feed the cat in here, so I need to find a new place to do that, I'm guessing. Right. Does the dog eat the cat food, or...? Yes, dog will eat cat food. Okay. And actually, cat food's not very good for dogs. It's very high in protein. So yes, okay. you definitely have to find somewhere else for the cat. OK. You can't give a puppy free reign at the house. Okay. Not until it's toilet trained, otherwise there'll be accidents everywhere. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it now. Okay. Katie now sees that actually this is probably more work than she first thought. The more I'm telling her, the more overwhelmed she's getting. But the preparations won't be left to Katie alone. Everyone will have to do their part. I want everyone to do something now. Get down on your tummies. Everybody get down on your tummies. Put your head down like that. Anything that you see on this level is going to be chewed. Maggie, look behind you. What's on the ground underneath the chest there? An electrical wires and stuff. Electrical wires. It's very dangerous. So what we have to do is we have to puppy-proof the room, which means we have to make the room safe for puppy, OK? Victoria made some really good points that I didn't even think about. I would have never been prepared for, to get a puppy. OK. Coming up, it's decision time for the Thelans. So who are you going to pick? Victoria Stillwell is in the midst of a puppy intervention. I don't care how much she fights. She's already helped Not Elise good. and John with their wayward puppy, Raven. Now, she and the Thelans family are on their way to find the perfect pet to add to their brood. Today, we get to get a puppy. OK, everybody. Let's go. The Thelans know they want a dog, but they don't know much else. Family looking for a medium-sized dog, nothing too big, nothing too small, and something that would fit with their home, would fit with their family. The fact that they've got young children is an important factor. The first step is to settle on the right breed. <laughs> hey, guys. Look at that. Are the Lab so Shepherd mixes? They're beautiful, though. If you don't want a big dog, Lab Shepherds, they can grow to be quite big. All right, let's take a look at some let's more. Let's keep going. <laughs> Again, probably too big for you. We came across the Beagle Basset Hound mixes, and straight away I could see that the Thelans were very interested in those. I could see taking one of these little guys okay. home. A Beagle Basset Hound is very middle of the road. It's going to fit perfectly the criteria that the family are looking for. Just mind the poopy. The next step is to get a closer look. Now, they're all a little bitey, don't worry. They're just It's just their way of saying hello. 
They all seem really sociable. They do. I'm looking for a puppy that is sociable, a puppy that wants to interact, not just with the adults, but with the kids especially. I mean, I would say any of these puppies are lovely. <laughs> After a few more minutes of play, two puppies seem particularly responsive to the family. The Humane Society has dubbed them as Snowboard and Whistler. Oh, that one's a Whistler. She's <laughs> calmer than the rest. Very sociable. Let's have a look at Snowboard. Hi. My favorite puppy is Snowboard because he's really cool. She's not wiggling too much trying to get away from me. Whistler's game, she's wanting to really interact. She's a bit softer mouth. Snowboard's very pretty, but I think she bites a little harder. So who are you going to pick? Whistler. 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 Here she is, then. Come on, Daddy. You take Hello, it. pretty girl. Hello, pretty girl. We picked Whistler. Jack was upset initially, but I think he's come around. Whistler gave him a couple of big licks on the side of the face, and uh, that's kind of won him over. With the paperwork signed, it's time to introduce the puppy to her new home and carry out one of the most important tasks okay. of puppy ownership. We've got to really fix a name within the first few days of puppy being here. So puppy's going to know what her name is. Have you guys thought of a name? Lollipop. Lollipop? I love it. So Providing Lollipop with a few safe and comfortable spaces is the next priority. This is the family area. It's great if puppy cannot be isolated and be with you. First, she creates a temporary pen in the living room so Lollipop can be close to the family during the day. Then, Victoria prepares a more permanent space in the laundry room. I've set up a crate here. This is amazing. I want to train her that she eliminates just on these pads. When house training a puppy, if you have a yard, you can right away take puppy out on a leash to one area. In colder environments with a very young puppy, it's best to paper train indoors. I like to cover the whole area with pads, and then wow. every couple of days, I remove one. Okay. And then every couple of days, I remove another, so that wow. there's only one or two pads left, so then she knows that she has to go over to her pad to do her toilet. Essentially, There's just one last essential element to make the room complete. Put up a baby gate. Puppies need to have you around. She needs to be in here, but not locked away. Okay. And that's going to cause her less stress. With the safe room prepared, it's time for some puppy playtime. Should we put her down? There you go. But already, the kids have missed an important step. Look what she's doing. Told you. There you go. <laughs> right. So let's put all of this stuff up here, OK? Let's put it up on the table. While the family finishes their cleanup, Lollipop makes another kind of mess. Oh, 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 oh. She just peed. Just a little bit. I knew that Lollipop would need to finish her elimination, and I wanted her to finish it in the safe room. There you go. There you go. Oh, she's so hungry. We can't take her back upstairs because this is the time she's likely to eliminate. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave her here now. I'm going to put the gate up, and we'll give her some time and space, OK? OK. okay Let's guys. do that, guys. Victoria has briefed the family on the basics. The rest is now up to them. I just have to tell you that, yes, you now have your fourth child. <laughs> Just what we always wanted. Just what you always wanted. Your biggest thing to tackle is going to be the potty training, and I would say good luck. OK. <laughs> Start the house training process, I would say, in about a week's time, when it gets warmer. But until then, just use all the pads. I will see you very soon. Thank okay. you so much for all your help. Thanks, Victoria. Bye. Great to meet you guys. Bye. Bye. The hard work starts now. Owning a puppy is a very rewarding experience, but it takes a lot of time lot of effort. Coming up, the families are on their own to deal with their precocious pups. Hey, if you don't have an eye on her, then there's going to be trouble. Oh, my God! Oh. Victoria has helped two families get to grips with two different puppy hey. challenges. I don't care how much she fights. For the next few days, they'll both continue training alone, and the Thelans are already discovering just what a handful their new puppy will be.
I think the hardest thing for us since Victoria's been gone is the neediness. You can't leave her alone for a second, and so really, if you don't have an eye on her, then there's going to be trouble. Lollipop barks a lot during mealtime. She was just barking and barking at the breakfast table, so finally I just went over, I picked her up, and just brought her to the table. Aw, she loves you. Across town, Elise and John are just now realizing the level of commitment needed to raise a puppy right. I've definitely been doing more things with Raven than I have in the past. Elise has made sure that I take Raven out every time that the schedule says I should. It really feels good to feel as though I have a partner there to share some of the burden with Raven's needs. And I think that we're well on the way to having Raven potty train. When Raven is inside the house, she's enjoying her new spacious accommodations and will even go into her crate on command. Crate? Good girl. Good girl, Raven. Later in the week, Victoria checks in. I'm looking forward to seeing how both families are getting along with their puppies. The Thielen's kids are making an effort to help their parents with some of the less appealing puppy chores. She took a wee wee. Why'd she take a wee wee? Lollipop pees like every two seconds. Pick it up, throw it in the garbage, put a new one down. Get a new one, or I will. Good teamwork, kids. I know the pee pads are gross, but you're all pitching in. With a newly cleaned pen, Lollipop is eager to play. But she's a little more rambunctious than the kids are expecting. No, no. That, that's not a bunny. That's not a bunny. This isn't good. Allowing a dog to mouth now will create horrible habits that are hard to break. Those mouthing habits are all too familiar for Elise and John. Raven! Raven! Raven, come here. Good girl, sit. And they're practicing Victoria's techniques for eliminating those habits. Good girl. Good girl. Go ahead. Go, Raven. Good. It's important to let her off the leash after a bit so that she associates the leash with good things. Raven! Raven! I practiced maybe five or six times getting Raven on and off the leash, and she didn't get too aggressive, which made me really happy. Let's go. Back at home, Elise and John have invited a friend over. Hey. Hey. When I usually come over to Lisa and John's house, Raven's always very prominent. She's trying to bite everybody, basically. All right. <laughs> and we're... Ah, down. Raven. Sweet. Let's go. Let's go. The minute Raven jumped up on Walter, I pulled Raven off and told her down. I took her off to the side and waited for her to calm down before I reintroduced her to Walter. Perfect, Elise. By removing Raven when she jumps up, shows her that there are negative consequences to that behavior. Hot. Uh, okay. Raven. Wet. <laughs> Sit. Good girl. It took a couple of times of removing Raven and making sure that she calmed down before we reintroduced her to Walter. But after maybe four or five times, she was able to just sit down and not try to bite or mouth him. Good girl. Yay. Well, I almost don't know how to react to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely surprised at how calm Raven was, and it lets me know that I can bring people over now. I'm so proud right now. At the end of the visit, Raven is just laying on the ground, almost closing her eyes. It's almost like she's tired. You, I've never seen Raven tired before. Look at that. It's nice to see Raven lying so calmly on the floor. What a difference her behavior is to when I was first there. Well done. It looks like Elise and John and the Thielans have made good progress with the puppies, but there's still a lot more work to be done. I want to meet up with everyone and see if we can take this training to the next level. Coming up, Victoria gathers both families together and reveals the secret to raising a well-mannered pup. This is really your foundation and is gonna set your dog up for success. Victoria is on her way to follow up with both families and show them the single most important step in raising a puppy right. There's still work to be done with both puppies, so I wanted to bring both the families to a dog training facility 
where the puppies each get a little bit of socialization and a class. First to arrive are the Thielens and their pup, Lollipop. Hey, guys. <gasps> How's she doing? She's great. She's lively. The time that is most crucial that the dog gets experiences of different environment situations and people and other dogs is between 8 and 16 weeks old. As Lollipop is 12 weeks old, she's able to come to a place like this. So that's why I've got you here today. Great. Okay. Puppy socialization has to be done very sensitively because you don't want to give a pup a bad experience. So let's put little one down on the ground now. The leash off? Yes, take the leash off and allow her to explore. There you go. Straight away, Lollipop finds herself a new chew toy. I don't want her to do that. So when she does that, I want you to clap your hands and walk away from her, OK? Remember, the only time she can keep playing with you is if she keeps her mouth closed. And you have to start it from now, because if you don't, you're going to have an adult dog that nips and bites your clothes with very big teeth, and you don't want that. After Lollipop has a few moments to explore, Victoria brings in another puppy. Lolly. Lolly, who is it? OK, now you can let her off the leash. I had another puppy brought in, a Shih Tzu, called Dolly. Lolly, look. Oh, no. She says, I'm not too sure. And Dolly and Lolly got on very well. This is the first time she's ever met another puppy that wasn't one of her siblings. And the way she deals with it's very important, and we mustn't interrupt. Now she's saying, oh, you're kind of cool. Can you play? <laughs> They're having a great time. Look at that. <laughs> She's coping well. It is really important that the Thielens continue with socialization because it's the most important thing they can do with their dog. So I think a one-on-one -on -one with other pups is going to be a really good thing. Lollipop is showing promising social skills, but Victoria also wants her to witness some older pups in action. To do that, she'll introduce Lollipop to another one of her puppy students. Thielens, I want you to meet Elise and John and their dog, Raven. These are the Thielen family. John and Elise have had their puppy now for quite a while. And the Thielens have had their puppy for precisely, hmm, what is it, four days, five, five, days. five days? <laughs> I'm going to do a little puppy class with Raven. And um, because Lollipop is too young for this, I'll ask you guys if you could go. I've set up some chairs for you. If you guys could go and sit down there and watch. This is what you are going to be doing with her when she gets a little older. Great. Okay. okay? All right. My goal with Raven is to get her accustomed to being around other dogs, to focus on her owner, and to get accustomed to being communicated with and to go through cues when there are other dogs present. This is particularly important for Raven, since her early months were spent mostly in isolation. I want to do something very simple. Move your dogs around just in a little bit of a circle and then ask them to sit for you. Victoria takes the puppies and their nice. owners through a series of basic commands. Good girl. I think this is a real eye-opening experience for us today. And this kind of uh, puppy training or dog school is something I really have no familiarity with uh, whatsoever. Um, so it's good to see it in action. So now, let's just do a focus cue where you're going to put your food in front of your dog's nose, lift it up to your eyes, and just say, watch me. This teaches the puppies to stay calm and focused in a new environment. I think Raven did very well, and I'm really looking forward to enrolling her in other classes and having a good dog. Giving your dog the experiences like this around other dogs is really your foundation and is going to set your dog up for success. OK, so well done. I just have to say it's been a real pleasure working with both of you. I wish you lots of luck with your puppies and their onward journey. Victoria has shown us that pretty much the things that we were doing were wrong, and she's put us on the right way that we can continue to progress with Raven. These puppies could not be luckier to be with people like you. Lots of love to you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. It's not easy raising a puppy. It's a lot of time, a lot of dedication. You need to be patient, you need to be committed. And if you put in the work at an early stage, you are going to be rewarded with a dog that is healthy and happy and confident.
The training's been going pretty well. It's slow, but it's we're moving along. The kids are being really respectful of a new puppy. Um, they love to play with her, and they love to run around and have lollipop chase them. The pee pads are a fabulous idea. We started out with about a dozen of them all over the floor, and little by little, we pulled each pee pad away, just like Victoria said, and honestly, we're down to about one pee pad in every room in the house. We found some really good playmates for Lollipop because there's a lot of dogs around the neighborhood. I feel a lot more confident that we're doing the right things for Lollipop and getting her what she needs. Since the training, Raven is a lot calmer. She's not as mouthy. She comes to us for affection without jumping up uh, more often. Stay. She's starting to listen a lot more. Great. Oh, that's a good Raven. Since I've become a little bit more involved with Raven's everyday life, it's no longer a chore having to do things with Raven and help her out. I pretty much enjoy it. Raven, come here. I don't have any worries about um, getting Raven to come back to me. Good girl, Raven. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.